Hamis Chigun in filing this case raised seven grounds citing that justices of court of appeal Ella Dean Lanfact in delivering their judgment in the case he had filed against DTB Uganda and DTB Kenya. Justices in this matter include Chief Justice Alfonso Munyidolo, Faith Monda, Pase Knight Tuhaise, Justice Stephen Musota, and Justice Mike Chibita. Justices said there was no law brought or cited to the attention of this court forbidding the creation of the impunged syndicated agency relationship between DTB Uganda and Kenya. This is because the first respondent is responsible for the disbursements of the funds from the second respondent to the appellants, holds the mortgaged loan securities in trust for the second respondent. <coughs> Similarly, no law was brought to this court's attention that forbids foreign financial institutions from extending credit facilities to any financial institution all person in Uganda. Court also ordered that such syndicated transactions, which were done by DTB Uganda to Hamis Chigundu, are not governed by the laws of financial institute acts in Uganda. I can't see how this arrangement and the transactions that were carried out pursuant thereto could be construed to mean that the second respondent carried out financial institution business in Uganda within the meaning ascribed to the phrase financial institution business. In the case of Uganda, such international financial business transactions are certainly neither governed by the Financial Institutions Act of 2004 as amended, nor the Financial Institutions Agent Banking Regulations of 2017. On the grounds that justices Eladin Lanfacts when they abandoned the grounds of appeal by introducing new grounds, Stream Court ruled otherwise. I am unable to fault the Court of Appeal for in the exercise of its duty to re-evaluate proceedings of the trial court, noting glaring errors in the procedure adopted by the trial judge the determination of which it deemed might have a bearing on the decisions of the trial judge. Therefore, court ordered a retrial and also ordered a Miss Chigundu to pay costs of 50% for both court of appeal and Supreme Court. The issue of illegality having been resolved in this appeal, which was the genesis of the appeal to the court of appeal, and ultimately to this court is remitted back to the High Court for trial before another judge, basing only on issues of fact. Amis Chigundu's lawyer failed to arrest the judgment as court overlooked their prayers. In fact, the Supreme Court has confirmed that the transaction was illegal because it is not supported by law. But they say since it is a syndicated loan, which the same court has not quoted any law supporting it that it should go ahead, which we think is wrong because, as you have seen, we had applied to this same court to adduce evidence of illegality. But the Supreme Court has refused and has said, don't talk about that. And we are not, we are not happy with the decision, but we accept it. We shall go back to the lower court and argue. The penalty of Ms. Chigundu this time round didn't appear in court, though his supporters expressed the dissatisfaction. Seriously, as Ugandans, as you're seeing, the people here, they're not happy at all. Things are not good. DTB Bank is not being fair. We are uh, advocating for justice. We would want to, Mr. President to intervene. This is our petition. And the uh, Ugandans, the members have signed upon it. So we require you to please come have a way in this and we, are, we find justice. DTB Uganda and DTB Kenya were represented by lawyer Edward Karugire. Amis Chigundu claims that DTB Kenya illegally withdrew $120 billion from his account without his consent in the form of paying a loan he had borrowed from DTB Uganda. Deborah Namamonde, UBC News.